Hey guys, it's Grant Balfour here, ex-pitcher of the Tampa Bay Rays, Oakland Athletics, Minnesota Twins, Milwaukee Brewers, Cincinnati Reds. I just wanted to uh, say you're watching Matty C Sports for You and Me podcast. Enjoy the show. It's got a lot. Matty's got a lot of uh, great things to talk about. Wide range of sports. Get on there. I uh, hope to see you guys soon on the show. All right, guys. Take care. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. Coming in at 320 kilobytes per second, it's time for Maddie C's Sports for you and me. All right, everybody, what's good? Matty C Sports for you and me. Um, I have a person here. He is a pretty dope fighter. He had a heavyweight fight last time I saw him. It was at Cage Titans Combat Night 3. Um, impressed me. So usually the people that I respect and appreciate their game, I usually put them on my show. So um, I got here Hassan Graham, a.k.a. the Bounty Hunter. And uh, how are you doing today, man? Feeling good, man. How you doing? I'm all right, man. And you know, you you're on a good card this this month or next month. I mean, April second. Um, it yeah. is going to be a big card. Um, Mike Paul Vier always told me, well, his my last thing is, there's never a card that's the best card. There's always going to be a card that that's good after that one. So I see you in many cards coming forward. And this one, you're fighting Jeff. Uh, if I can say it right, Sol Soy Vien. None of us could pronounce that last name. I'll just say Soy Vien. So that's uh, Cage Titans fifty two in Plymouth. So, um, so what do you what do you think of this guy? I mean, do you have any stats or knowledge of this guy? Um, not really much. I just know you know he's been around for a long time. Uh, he's five and four at the moment. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a dog fight. So when this opponent was actually presented to me, it was no hesitation. I text back to Mike. I said, title fight? He said, yes. I said, yes. And then that was the end of it. You know, I'm looking to fight the best around to test myself. It's amateur. We're not ducking no one. We're not running from anyone. It's amateur. Win or lose. It's all experience right now. It doesn't count for me. I'm willing to take anyone that steps in front of me and, you know, go from there. You're going to learn from every fight you have. And you definitely proved yourself in your last fight at combat night when you faced um, Eric Rondon. And yes. um, it didn't take too long, <laughs> 32 yeah. seconds into the first round. And, um, you know, you said to me that you you absolutely felt what you accomplished. I mean, you in 32 seconds, you really – in the last seconds you were just grounding and pounding and like it was just unbelievable to see like it, it was like it was just something so crazy that you know it it was like a it was like a fighting if you're in the UFC type of deal like very oh, quick man, very, that's, hopefully you were pumped, that's I could tell. oh yeah I was really pumped I was whoo I was so pumped for that one um, I actually came into that fight with a lot of nerves. That's the thing about that one. I was really nervous going into that fight. Um, just coming into Cage Titans overall, it felt so real and professional. So it was a little overwhelming how big of a platform it is. So coming into there, you know, you're always nervous. And did I know it was going to happen that way? No, I'm happy it happened that way. Uh, but every fight, man, I'm coming to look in and just fight. 
It doesn't matter. I'm going to swing and go out on my shield until the ref stop it. So if the ref didn't come in to 20 minutes later, I'm going to keep pounding that face in. And and that's what people don't understand. They're waiting for the ref to come, and then they get a oh, no. the the opponent gets like a a, a like rejuvenation kind of like what what is somebody gonna finish me or no? Yeah, you know, we're, that's, we're not that's waiting some, for no refs. No, and we got you know, I'm sorry and, to cut you off. No, that's okay. Just keep w- what you're saying, man. Yeah, we're this not waiting for no refs over here. We're going for the kill every time. So. It's, it's kill to be killed in there at the end of the day. So we're not waiting for no rest. I'm going to go 100% until the rest pull me off, plain and simple. And your your team is just a really good bunch of guys. You know, they're very respectful and they're all class in there when I talk to them. You know, we talked a little bit and, you know, it, your team just seems like they're like a family. You know, like I saw it in there that like – they. They know a lot about you. They they care about you, and they're very nice to the the media, like myself. And um, sure. how is it working with those guys? You know, first of all, shout out to Chapman's House of Pain. Um, it's it's good. You know, we're a small group of guys over there. We're grinding every day together. Um, we got we got some other guys that's about to make their pro debut, amateur debuts also. But I love it, man. It's a small gym, but we grind hard every day. Um, also got a shout out G and G because they helped me out a lot also, but my gym, I'm telling you, we're going to make a lot of noise. It's coming. It's coming April 2nd. And then around June, hopefully the whole team pull up to that next car. And it was, it was a good thing. You got, you, you showed your stuff right away and you told everybody you were here. You legit oh, made yeah. it that way. Like there was we're no here. hesitation. and. Like once you came into the interview room, I was like, damn, like this guy is just full of confidence, full of like adrenaline, full of like he wants to come back to Cage Titans with vengeance. And, you know, uh, going for that belt, bro, me. like it seems like you're like you're hungry for that. And I like the limo, bro. Like I wish I could go in that and take go oh. along for the ride, man. Like I said, we're coming over. We're coming to take over, man. We pulling up, styling. We, we coming. We're going to change the whole Plymouth platform. So we're coming to take over the show. Everybody from Western Mass, this whole Springfield area, we're coming through. We're definitely going to take it over. And, and the Springfield area is a bunch of grinders, and hungry fighters, whether it 100%. be, whether it be um, MMA, boxing. I got nothing but respect for you guys out there. You know, like all every single one of you guys are class and respect and you know, it's not, and I've had people from different areas, like, you know, they give you that, like, kind of whack show, like, they're boring, or, you know, nah, you know, yeah, oh, well, we, look, well, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for my next fight, like, oh, like, oh, it's nah. not, it's not like that with you guys, you guys are fun and good to talk to, and you got, you all work hard in that Springfield area, it's full of, full of grinders, and, you know, whatever they need to do to get going, so. Get the job done at the end of the day, that's all it's really about. It's just a long damn ride, man. <laughs> oh, man, talking about that. So a little story from my first fight. I actually crashed my car and totaled it on the way to the fight. Oh, shit. Yeah, so no one really knows that. On the way to Plymouth, because it was the snowstorm, and we was driving out there, I actually crashed my car. Uh, then we continued. We drove out there, drove it back, and I just found out a couple of days ago it's total. So... Even that was weighing on me that fight. So I was kind of coming in there pissed already because I crashed the car. So I was just like, ha, <laughs> oh, man. And I was just hoping we made it back in the car, which we did. So, you know, hopefully, well, this time when we come out there, we're going to be out there day, day ahead, day earlier. Yeah. Um, you. It, it's funny you said that because it was like, no. for those who don't know, that night was terrible. It was frozen solid ice. It oh, was yeah. if you didn't get there before four or five o'clock, the roads were already frozen. The parking lot was frozen that night. So uh, yeah. And you know, you you guys um I didn't know that story, so shit. Like yeah. I would be pissed too, but like sucks for their uh sucks for Eric whip for that one. <laughs> but that's where the frustration came out at. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, I mean, it, how do you like the Cage Titans family? Like, you know, for for me, it's like Mike Paul Via, and I've said this before. He from the soda guy who's selling soda or beer to up to the main event card, he re, he respects every single solitary person oh, yeah. in that building. And how do you feel like um, being part of the Cage Titans family? Oh, I love it. Um, from the day we, we made contact with each other, you know, he showed nothing but love. He didn't even know me. He never seen me fight. I had no name. He brought me out to his show. And, you know, and from there, we, we've been building. Um, it just like I said, going in there from weighing in to just I got my wingspan done, professional photos. It's, it was a great feeling. It it made you want to fight there. It's just like, it, it's feel great. It's just like, you feel like a professional coming in and the way the whole process, the way he does things, it's kind of like a guideline. He's teaching you, like you have to be professional, even like with your intro music, you know, he wants you to pick a song that's not going to have swears and everything in it to be professional. And I love it. I mean, it's a great feeling. It, it's just dope. Like I said, Plymouth is two hours away but I'm going to make that my home coming for the title. Uh, win it, win, lose, draw. I want to go back on the next card and the next card and the next card I, pro debut there. I love the promotion Two hour drive. I'm willing to make it every time. And the crowd was rocking for when you took that, that knockdown and you beat the shit out yeah. of Eric and uh, the crowd. The crowd makes loved it. it. I wish it was a packed house that night. You know, the storm slowed a lot of people down. But well, this the time... Other, the other reason it was kind of, you know, uh, the card was kind of uh, different from the aspect of there was not just MMA. There was Muay Thai. There was grappling. Mm -hmm. There was um, that super fight, which I thought was crazy. But, you know, it it was a good it was a good all around car. Cause I got to meet people that do different things and right. you know, it was, it was nice to be in that atmosphere. So, uh, and um, it was, uh, it was a good little uh, time there. And if you missed it, then it was sorry for you. Yeah, it, you was, know? it was definitely different. It was definitely different to see all other things that went on that night. It was very interesting. Yeah, for sure. And it, you showed your stuff there and you made it, you definitely made it known that, you know, you're, you're here and you're not going anywhere. I mean, obviously if you go in the UFC or somewhere big, then yeah. Sure. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you made a good impression that night and, you know, I think the name Hassan, the bounty hunter Graham is going to be well known in Plymouth and, I think the other reason too that it was it was tough because you know it, it was cold it was it was not a pretty thing for the weather but now it's coming and April second is going to be a big card and you're in it so like this card you like is this more like determined and more serious than the last card? Now every card is serious. Every time you fight is serious. Um, every card is serious. It doesn't matter. 50 people there, 100 people there, 300 people there. It's a serious thing. This card, I haven't even been paying any mind to who's on the card, to tell you the truth. There's only one person I got to pay, pay attention to, and that's my opponent. So I haven't really been paying attention to who's on the card. I don't know much about the card right now, but I'm on it. That's all that matters for me. Um, right. No disrespect to anybody else on the card, but when I come, it's my show. It's my time to shine, so... Yeah, that's a good that's a good point you know being focused on your own fight instead of somebody else's after you fight then you can focus on the of other course. Fight. i mean any other heavyweights on the card i'd be focusing on that you know i i, I just i'm there to bang i just want to come have fun bang and put on a great show and see that that's the thing is you know you're you're ranked in the new england area and you know um as an amateur and there's not a lot of heavyweights in your division. So it's like, it's tough to like, you know, find a fight. And I would say, is there anybody you're particularly looking for to fight? Is there, is there a certain person you're ready to go, go at? I mean, no, it doesn't matter for me. Um, 
I like guys like like Jeff for the simple fact he's five and four. He has experience. I want to mm-hmm. fight guys that has the experience because, like I said, I'm an amateur. Win or lose, it doesn't matter to me at this time. Let's get in the cage. Let's bang, and I'm going to learn. I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time, and that's it. I'm here for a good time, and I'm out. Uh, amateurs, you know, like you said, there's not a lot of them around. So I probably got about two to three more amateur fights in me, and then I'm going pro. And from that last fight, you looked like a pro. You know, it, it was a <laughs> it it was quick, but it, you you made your presence known, and people now should see who Hassan the bounty hunter is for who you are and how you fought that night. It was it was crazy, and you know it, it's it's awesome to see because Mike doesn't bring you know guys that are kind of you know slumping or anything. They want he wants everything fair. He he is a good right. judge of who can fight who or, you know, anything like that. And um, it it was just, that was a good night because it it introduced me to a whole different, whole different game to, you know, the Muay Thai, the grappling, the super fight, like that stuff I never really focused on, but MMA and boxing has been a big thing. And Mike's been a big part of it, you know, getting me introduced to the MMA game and, meeting new people such as yourself and it's it's an awesome Mm -hmm. experience like i wouldn't trade it for the world mma has become a big thing for me now so you know mma MMA is dope man i love it um it's crazy because the way i got into it is honestly like i hopped off the couch my first smoker was right after vacation and i i was in mexico or puerto rico i can't remember coming off of seven days of vacation drinking just having fun and, you know, I got a smoker and I was like, let's do it. Banged out in the smoker. It was fun. And I was actually, the funny thing is I was supposed to be one and done with MMA. I just wanted one fight. I just wanted to do it because I always watch it, stuff like that. So I said, I'm going to be one and done. I'm going to take a fight, fight, and I'm done. I had my smoker and I was hooked. I was hooked. And then I was like, all right, I want to fight again. And then I uh, fought on Premier, which was my first card. My first fight against uh, Max, Max Lombardi, big dude also. And I was in another situation where right out of vacation, seven days on vacation, drinking. Was, just, was that um, Mass Mutual? <laughs> that was Mass Mutual, yes. Okay, okay. That's mass Mutual, my, that was my first fight. Uh, uh, right after vacation, get in there, fight, out of shape. I gassed out after the first round. He was whooping my ass the second round. Going to the third round, he was giving it to me again, and then I caught him in the third round, and we finished it that way. And ever since then, I've been hooked. It's like every month I want to fight. But legit, if I don't get hurt or no injuries, anything in April, the next card, hit me up, any promotion, the next card, I'm there. Because like I said, amateurs, I don't want to be here for long. I want two to three more amateur fights, and then let's go pro, you know, make a name for myself for real. And there's a lot of good promotions out here in New England. And a lot of people don't understand, like, Combat Zone, Cage Titans. Um, you know, even up north, I don't know too much about the New Hampshire main um, promotions. But CES is everywhere. And, yeah. you know, it, it's it's a kind of tight-knit community in its own. Like, nobody's trying to steal this guy or, you know, it, it's it's got to be that way because there's some grimy promotions out there that'll that'll screw you over. And, you know, I'm sure you know the difference between, you know, going to a good promotion and a bad promotion. And I see Mike really takes care of the fighters. And, oh, yeah, he does. And um, I'm, I mean, good promotion, bad promotions, you know, I'm still also learning the game overall um, for me. Promotions don't, it doesn't matter where you go. At the end of the day, if a promotion present a guy in front of you, do your research. Plain and simple, do your research. If you feel like you can't beat the dude, say no. You feel like you could, say yes. But as an amateur, any promotion right now can hit me up. It doesn't matter who the fighter is. I'm an amateur. I'm going to go in there. It's a learning experience. So let all promotions know. It doesn't matter. You got a heavyweight that needs some work. The bounty hunter is here. Put a price on their head. We got it. Plain and simple. Put a price on their head and I'm there. And 
and and that's the thing is like the Springfield area is just wide open right now. They're now taking a place that had, uh, you know, a minor league hockey team and they're bringing it up to, you know, MMA venues. And, you know, and I think the casino helped out a good, good deal in, in that deal. It's just so weird when you, when you see the MMA events, they're all in that little like corner, like it's not in the actual, you know, arena or the rink, whatever you want to call it, but it's still a cool scene. Eventually they're going to have to take notice and and put it in a big arena because let's just put all the local guys on the card and you bring Mm -hmm. in other cities and stuff like that. You have to represent your city, put us in a big arena. We got some big names in the area overall. And, you know, we got other names that's building up there and other people building up their names. So eventually it will happen. You know, we're, we're still working. And that's why me coming to Plymouth, other people going to CNS, CES, everywhere else fighting, they're building up their names. So once we all build up our names and then that's it, we put in Springfield on the map. And uh, I'm from New York originally, so I always let, let it be known. It's Brooklyn also. I also got Brooklyn behind me. That's where I'm from, Brooklyn, New York. But I live in Springfield, Mass. now. But where still, Brooklyn I got at? <laughs> best I, Roosevelt Project. So you're definitely humble for sure. And that's sure. a that's a big that's a big area. And that's that's one of the big boxing capitals of, of the world, you know. And and I don't know about the MMA game out in Brooklyn or anything like that, but I know there's a lot of promotion in that area. A lot of promotion. So yeah, and, I'm also trying to get a homecoming. I'm trying to I'm trying to get on an MMA card in New York. Now, talking about Shady's promotions, that's what they're all at so far that I have experienced. But that, that'd be great for you. And, and that's what a lot of fighters really hope for. They want to do it in front of their hometown. They want to do it in a big venue. They don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to go to, you know, small venues. But like you said, I, I see it. I like the way you say it. It doesn't matter if there's 50 people hundred people, a thousand people, as long as you're in there having fun, you don't give a shit besides yeah. going in the octagon. And that's, that's a good thing. So my next question to you is when you, when, before you started, so you were into football now, were, were you big into that or like, did you have more dedication to that more than MMA at the time? Um, no. So Football was high school and college. Mm -hmm. Um, High school and college, I played football. After football, I was just working, working out, stuff like that. I played a little flag football here and there just to to be with the guys, you know. Um, That's that's my football career basically right there. It was a high school thing. I fell in love with it in high school, had fun, and then it got me to college. I honestly think if I never played football and got scholarships, I wouldn't went to college. So that's how I ended up playing football in college. And then after I was done with that, I just started working out, staying in shape. And then MMA came around because I always wanted to fight. Like I said, I always wanted to fight. And I got sick of lifting weights, so I started training. And then I was like, it was COVID time when I started training and nothing was going on. So I was like, ah, fuck this, I'm done. I don't even want to train because I can't fight. There's no fights going on. So I just went back to working out and then, smoker the smoker came about and then after the smoker i was hooked i was like yeah it's mma 100 percent." and funny thing is i got two fights in already the premier fight and the um k second fights i didn't have a camp for either one of those fights i just like trained here and there it's like i haven't fully tapped into now this is the first time i say i'm training for this fight every day i'm training for this fight um, I'm tapped in now, like, and now it's, it's real to me. The first two fights was just like, oh, I'm having fun, stuff like that. But now I'm tapped in, I'm training. I actually have a camp going on. So this is my first camp out of two fights. So we'll see what happens. Well, I think it's going to be a good one. And Jeff, like you said, is five and four. So it's kind of like, uh, and I don't want to say this in a bad way, but he's kind of like a journeyman, you know, like he's been in the game. He knows yeah. what he's doing. And, you know, those are the guys you got to worry about. I mean, I've seen it in the boxing game, actually, at Mass Mutual. 
one of the, one of the boxers I know came in. He was six, 17 and 0 and came in. A journeyman came out from California somewhere and started fighting him and really took him all all um all 12 rounds. Or was it 12 and, rounds? No, it was shorter than that. And, um, and that's the beauty. That's the beauty about this fight for me. Um that's what I want. I want I want someone in front of me that's gonna push me and and make me fight. I, that's what I want. I don't want easy fights. I don't want fights where I'm not gonna learn from. Because if I keep stepping in front of people that's on my level, I'm not learning. That's how right. I learn. I like to step in front of someone that's been around. I know what they're doing. Push me because I'm gonna push you. I, it doesn't matter how much experience you got. You gotta, you gotta put it on. Finish me. That's what you're gonna have to do. Finish me, because I'm coming for you. Well, that's like you know, I kind of know what you're saying because, you know, you don't want to come in fighting a an amateur who's got a an amateur pro date. I mean, an amateur debut. You know, because nah. you got no stats. You got, you know, I'm, but. Also, I would do that too because just because he's coming in as an amateur don't mean he's not a dog. But what I'm saying That's is, it. for me, I don't want to be an amateur for long. So my next, my last two to three amateur fights, I want someone that's been around that's five and four, five and whatever, that has those fights. Because in my eyes, if you're five and four, you've been around for a while. You should be pro by now. So. For me, this fight is kind of like a guy that has so much experience is going to teach me a lot. So my last three to four amateur fights, two to three amateur fights, I need people with experience to teach me because I'm not going to be an amateur after this. I'm going pro. And, you know, once you go pro, you're stepping in with dogs. So I'm trying to fight all dogs now. So when I do go there, when I go pro, I'm ready. Right, right. And. I think in cage Titans, it it's they take you on that journey, and that's what I respect about them is that they'll they'll do that. They'll send you in three or four that you need, and then you know I'm ready to go pro, and you know that's that's where you come in, and you know it's it's a tough game. I can see. I, I mean, I'm nowhere close to being ready for that. That's why I'm in the interview part of it, but you know. It, this upcoming fight should be a good one. I mean, this, this card is, is, is going to be, is going to be big. And, you know, I'll be in Florida trying to, trying to figure out how I can get the stream from there. <laughs> but um, so, you know, what, what's your goal for like, do you plan on staying with CES for a long while or do you, do you try to, you know, try to mix around, go to a, different um organization like ces or combat zone or is it more like you like you said if there's a fight coming up a month later you're gonna jump in it i mean i'm I'm open to everything right now um i'm open to everything every opportunity that come my way i'm open to it uh right after the cage second fight i was supposed to fight march 12th right after the uh the plymouth fight i was supposed to Mm -hmm. fight Two weeks later, March 12th, in ammo, but my opponent backed out, and, you know, it was last minute, so we couldn't find opponents. So, like I said, I'm trying to get all the experience I can and fast as an amateur. So, my plan is April 2nd, if I walk out of this fight, no injuries, I'm feeling good. If there's a card mid-April anywhere around, or the next month, I'm going to hop on it. If I can find an opponent, let's do it. I'm open to any promotion. All promotions, I'm open, man. I'm open, all promotions. So my last question to you. So we were talking about it. I talked to another person about it, is the yams and macaroni and cheese. So tell me, is there a certain macaroni and cheese that you have to have? Is there a certain cheese you got to have? Is there a certain thing that just makes that, like, the chronic, like, makes it, like, delicious? It has to be baked macaroni and cheese. It's the first thing. Got to be baked macaroni and cheese. But people fuck that shit up, though. Oh, yeah, you could. I mean, you got to, it depends on who makes it. That's that's the big thing. It depends on who makes it. You got to have the right person make it. 
I, like I told you, I thought you was gonna be there in April. I could have, you know, gone your little plate. Somebody, I know, I'm up. pissed. That was, that was one of the things. You gotta find you a soul food restaurant. They they gonna that's the best spot to go. Soul food restaurant. You find one of those. Baked macaroni and cheese and yams. Just mix those two up. Sorry, Sorry hold on. <laughs> Hi. Good. Are you done? I'm almost done. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, that that's something like that's my like go to all the time, like that's my like m- my life macaroni and cheese. I lived off it forever. What type so, of macaroni and cheese we're talking about? We're talking about baked macaroni and cheese, I'm talking about baked. If okay. I'm not in the mood, I want a quick little fix, you know, the, the quick, um. The craft or some no, we, okay no 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 that's <laughs> no craft <laughs> no no that that ain't that ain't something uh i'm into okay okay so i mean that that's the stuff that we're into oh, sorry um <laughs> so yeah i mean th- that's stuff i'm into and you know I, i'm very interested in mixing in the yams with that that would just the best. We are gonna get you a plate. We are gonna get you a plate. All right, sounds good. Because I know you'll be back there, or I'll drive my ass to Springfield to go get some. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna get you a plate. Don't worry. So for everybody who doesn't know, April second, Plymouth it's Memorial Hall. Yep, Cage Titans fifty two. Uh, Hassan Graham, aka the Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter Killer. <laughs> Um, Bounty hunter. I saw. He's taking on Jeff. Um, so you got to be there, people. I mean, this is going to be a really good card, and it's it's going to be a fun time. This guy puts on a show, and he's ready. So check this guy out. He's going to be on the card. He's he's ready. He's he's one of the first selected. You're like on the in the first draft, first round. You know, like you, you already got your name in there. There's some cards that are missing. Oh yeah, so you, yeah, you know, you always got to present the big boys fun first. You know, everybody want to come see the big boys. Somebody, someone has to drop when the big boys fight. So that's how you set the card off. You got to know the big boys is there, and you know, people gonna come see the big boys bang. Yeah, and make sure you see this guy because he can fucking bang, and he'll bang you right into the fucking canvas. So. Uh, Hassan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Nothing but respect you. you, man. And uh, April 2nd, please fuck shit up for me. I'll be in FLA gotcha. in the sun, but I'll shit, make sure I, I try I to watch it. Nah, nah, thank you can't be seven days out. <laughs> <laughs> no more vacations before fights, man. I learned, yeah. trust me. All right, thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, man. Have a good time. All right, man, thank you. Thanks for watching Matty C's Sports for you and me. Make sure to follow Matty Cameron on Twitter at MattCameron23 or follow him on Instagram at MattyC23 or subscribe to his YouTube channel, Matty C's Sports for you and me. Once again, thanks for watching.